Today is a very exciting day because we are renovating the very first room in our new house. Well, it's not really new. We've been here for a year, but I am so excited to be renovating our dining room. It's not that this room is bad by all means. It's just the corner cabinets are getting on my nerves and it's just a little bland, which is weird for me to say because I like everything clean slated, like white, but we're gonna be adding some different colors actually that I don't know if we've ever done before or that I've ever liked. I will like this renovation though. Ready to demo our first thing? I'm more than ready. I can't stand these cabinets. Me neither. I look horrible. It's just not a good look. It ain't it. Time, time to go. And there's two of them to make it even better. <laughs> time to get on getting while the getting's good. Always cut the caulk line. If you don't, you'll rip the drywall. That's your pro tip of the day. Oh, that's a pro tip. That's all I got. I'm not much of a pro when it comes to any of the rest of it, but always cut the caulk line. One thing I am kind of scared is that there's always bugs that come out of this. This is like open. Ew! There's actually a spider. To win! <laughs> when you strip screws out as you put them in. I really hope they didn't do that. What? That's linoleum. Are you joking? <laughs> and this whole floor is 100% not gonna last. <laughs> we potentially have a crisis, a future crisis on our hands. Um, <laughs> the prior people who own this house may have installed, well they did a lot of work here and they may have installed this floor very incorrectly. I can tell you they installed it incorrectly just from looking at it from the surface level because it's not straight. But the tile. But the worst, but the worst bit is is that right here, that is the lip of linoleum floor. And uh, I'm no tile expert, but I don't think you can put tile on top of glue down linoleum. One Google search later, apparently you can put tile over linoleum. That's new to me, but apparently you can. If done correctly, it's possible. Just not always advised. Well, let's just keep rolling. Let's get this cabinet out of here. Deal with this. Deal with all of the ripped drywall, torn drywall. Over the linoleum, mm. for sure. Mm. Yeah, but you see how none of that stuck to it? Yeah. Well, we might be replacing this entire floor at some point. <clears throat> Thank you. 
says that the grout and the joint compound um, needs to cure for I think 24 to like 48 hours. Right? Yep, 24 hours. So I guess we'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up this area and we'll get back to all this tomorrow. coat of joint compound is now on and we're about to do something really fun we're gonna make some beams in here what we got so we're making some faux beams we have one by sixes these are not the select grade that you'll see that's the most expensive this is sort of the mid grade one thing that we did do is we've bought these in advance and have had them sitting in our shop for uh, not quite a week but a week or more would be ideal. That just lets them sort of settle and acclimatize the space where they're gonna be built in so nothing crazy happens once they're built. It's uh, not a major concern, but it is a concern. Either way, we're going to take three of these guys and it's going to be very simple. It's literally just going to be this like that. Obviously they'll be flush. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a miter on here using the table saw and then join them together. That's going to make it look like one continuous beam. Might do a little distressing, but they're going to get stain of some type and maybe some distressing uh, before they go up. So that's the plan. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, I think this will be, I think this will be nice. I hope so. Hey, confidence. <laughs> So I'm not gonna lie, building beams like this is one of those things that looks real easy on camera, but it's actually not easy. And it's made much easier the better tools you have, the access to more tools you have. So out of uh, good faith, and I just wanna be upfront with you about this stuff, that these are the types of projects that can be really frustrating. So I'm gonna show you a way to do it without fancy tools. I don't know that you know, I would advise to do it without a table saw. This is a fancy table saw, but regardless, I'm about to show you a way to do it without fancy tools. And then the next one I do, we're going to use all the things that we have to make it easier on ourselves. But we have these three boards laid out. So we have 45 degree angle cut here, 45 degree angle cut here, here, and here. And these are going to stay flat. So what we're going to do with this first one, so we're going to lay them all out like this and we're going to use tape and we're going to join the seam together with painter's tape. You see how that makes a hinge effect? Now all we have to do is put our glue in here. It does two things actually. It keeps the glue from spilling out the other side and, and getting on the, the front face of your beam where you have to sand it off and it keeps uh, everything nice and square and tight. It is not the easiest way to do this, but it is a simple way to do it. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So we're just going to spread some glue out in here and then we're going to clamp it and we're going to double check that everything is square before we leave it to set up. So 
that toll is called a Festool Domino, which is a loose tenon mortar seat machine, which basically just means it makes a slot for these guys, these loose tenons. So there's a slot on each side, and then you simply place it in that hole, and it will go on the other side, and it creates a loose mortise and tenon joint. It is definitely a luxury to have, but it is something that in use cases like this is really worth it. It adds some strength, but more so than that, it just makes alignment super, super easy. And funny thing is, I'm pretty sure that this has taken longer than doing it the other way, and the other way went fairly well. It's just that sometimes the other way goes terribly bad. And this typically goes fairly good, so. We're doing it both ways. One thing that is necessary when using this, like most things, always dry fit it and make sure it works because sometimes, I'm not saying that I ever do this, ever, but sometimes you know you screw up and then you're halfway through a glue joint and you start throwing stuff across the room. So it's always a good thing. It's never happened before. It never happened. Never actually happens, but you know, it's always good to dry fit just in case. <laughs> But you will see, you will see that once this is all said and done, you will not be able to differentiate that one to this one. This just makes it a little easier. Easier or you feel better about it? Honestly, it just makes it a little more consistently easier. Just out of curiosity. Please tell me you like it. Yeah, it looks good. replace the trim anyway at a later date but might as well do it now while we're doing it in the dining room do it everywhere in this this door and like this little hallway we're just doing the least most minimal amount of it right now literally just a razor blade screwed to a block of wood and the block of wood just needs to be a little bigger than your biggest gap thickness our biggest gap thickness is right here so as long as that piece is thicker than that you're gonna get a perfect scribe and use a razor blade instead of a pencil because as you sand up to it or use a chisel up to it the fibers will actually break away and you'll know exactly when you hit your perfect line.
So I'm gonna go ahead and start painting. I'm gonna start with the ceiling. Dylan is out in the shop right now, if you can hear. Sanding down some shelves that are gonna be going up on the walls. But what I'm using to paint is, I'm using Wagner's Easy Roller Paint Stick, which is really cool because you attach this guy inside the paint can and then you insert this into here. So it goes like this and then you insert the roller on top of that and you get to fill this whole tube up with paint. So you never need a tray or you never need to refill with paint or anything. You can just fill it up and start going. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the kitchen side. This is the dining room. Kitchen is right here on the ceiling. I'm gonna cut in with a brush right where the ceiling meets the cabinets just so I don't get the cabinets all messy and whatnot and then I will move over to this side with the roller. second coat while well, I painted the trim outside currently cleaning tools <laughs> but it looks so good Dylan went to the old shop to grab um, some nail guns for the baseboards and I'm going to put the second coat of ceiling paint on done now that I'm done painting, Dylan is starting on cutting all of the trim. Just a slight nod. That's all I got. <laughs> I really don't want to mess up like, I don't know, several hundred dollars worth of trim. So I'm being very cognizant of what I'm doing. So you remember when I said that I wasn't going to screw this up because I was paying attention. Well, yeah, I screwed it up royally. So if you look here, and this is every single one, by the way, the vertical, I don't actually know what you call this, the vertical piece of the casing, the style, I guess. I didn't mirror them. I cut them all the same exact way, and therefore this angle is not on the right end of the board. I just cut a bunch of right-hand side boards. So I screwed like all of it up, not like a little bit of it up, like all of it up. I'm on the final one now, so I'm finally like calmed down enough to show you how I fixed it. And uh, yeah, so we'll just go through it step by step now, how to fix this colossal screw up that I don't want to talk about. Also, while I have you here, the top piece here, this one is on a 45, it's two pieces joined together. We ran out of material and the doors that these are going on are like all nestled together in the pantry area. And I don't think you'll notice this, but it's kind of an experiment for later in the house to know if we can do this or not, because if not, we are gonna waste a ton of material. So this section here is 45 and added on. So first things first, we gotta cut the correct angle in here. So we'll take it over to the miter saw and cut the right thing. I'm gonna make the other end be, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> So now as you can see we have the correct angle 
cut and everything works. But now we have this angle cut here on the bottom. Not ideal. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the exact off cut of this and just fill in this gap. And again, it's a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how much it goes away once we get everything filled, sanded, and painted. I think it's going to be fine, but it's a whole lot better than having to buy hundreds of dollars more of the material. And if you do see it, it's going to be when you're leaving the house, not when you walk straight in the door. Yeah, if that makes you feel feet. better. It's like at the very, I don't know, we'll find out later. But I don't know how I did this. I mean, this is like... Dylan needed a reset button today. So I could press it. Over and over and over and over today. I've mi I'm missing my order of operations, which is like, to me, is my strong suit. I'm the order of operations guy. And today I can't get anything right. So it's just one of those days. But we're going to cut this piece. We're going to fill it in. And everything's going to be fine. Voila, fixed. Now I could just super glue that on there, but I'm gonna put a little domino in there to strengthen it and help align it. And we're gonna go ahead and domino everything else. And it's not actually necessary, but it's gonna be really helpful in our case because this house is pretty old and the sheetrock people, well, sheetrock people in general sometimes can be iffy, but it's just a disaster in there as far as the levels being the same as the sheetrock and the door casings and sheetrock panel to sheetrock panel it's just kind of a disaster so if we don't hook these together and keep them tight before we install them there's a high likelihood that when we install them they could get forced kind of out of plane and that's going to look bad so that's why a lot of people will opt to glue these beforehand so people add something like a domino some people just glue them we're going to add a domino The last thing I'm doing is I'm spraying the ends where these are going to touch the floor. This is a shellac based uh, primer. What's good about this is that it's not water based. It's not going to soak into this and kind of make it bubble at all, which is what you want. It's also the main reason for it is I'm hoping it's going to give a little bit of moisture protection in case, I don't know, you're mopping the floor or something and water ends up near the bottom of the baseboard. I want, you know, the bottom to be sealed as well as possible. So. It's been spraying pretty thick right on the edge here. I'm just wiping the excess off the top. Trimali fashion of picking the most expensive trim at Home Depot, we're going to try to make this look kind of high end and not, not so cheap with just having it cut in like that. So Dylan's out on the stall figuring out all the angles for this. This was his idea, not mine.
to do what we have been waiting to do for weeks, and that is getting this room decorated. Molly and I are often asked how much our projects cost to do, so we thought it'd be fun to add into these videos, sort of a running total of what each individual project is costing us so that you can get an idea of what it might cost you as well. So I've got everything written down and I'm going to quickly go over things. Okay, starting with the tile and wall repair, it cost $113.81. Moving on to the paint, that was a grand total of $179.92. The beams were $122.33. That's including all the stain and other random things that went with that. And the shelves surprisingly only cost $24.14, though we did use some of the stain that we bought for the beams. And then for the finishes, like the light and the curtain rod, we paid $170.83. The rest of the decor was purchased at either thrift stores or we already had on hand and cost a negligible amount of money. And then finally, for the trim, it was a whopping $519.42, or $4.81 per foot for the baseboard and $2.64 four cents per foot for the door casing. Quite a lot of money. We are definitely gonna have to take our time doing that throughout the house, but I do think that would be incredibly worth it. Now, lastly, I'll add that we also bought some tools to complete this project, and those added up to, including the Wagner Easy Roller, added up to about $127.45. These are just random miscellaneous things that we either didn't have or we needed another version of. Bringing our grand total minus tools to $1,130.45 minus $40 because we actually sold those two cabinets that were in the corner on Facebook Marketplace, bringing the new total to $1,90.45 plus tools. So, you know, plus $130 more than that or roughly $7.68 per square foot, which makes it seem a lot better. That number is a lot easier to swallow than the other number. We spent about twice what we anticipated on spending on this room, simply because we just kept adding things like this major trim to the project, but overall, I think it was really worth it.